This is a normal map. And when you apply it to a mesh, it creates the illusion of height information without costing you anything in render times. Now, normal maps are frequently found on material websites like Polygon, as it allows you to create more realistic looking materials. But you can also create your own normal map by taking a high res mesh, placing it on top of a low res mesh, then baking the detail from one to the other. This method is used extensively in video games. And in fact, if you go looking for it, you'll find that almost every single model in a AAA game has a normal map baked onto it because it's free detail. It costs nothing in performance, but it adds significant detail and realism. And while it's often associated with video games, it's not exclusive. You'll find baked normals across most objects in movies as well, as it adds surface level detail without costing anything in render times. It's a really useful trick. I think you'll find a lot of use for it. So let's get to it. Okay, so on layer one, we have our high polyed anvil with sculpting details and everything. And then on layer two, I have this lower poly anvil, very simplified mesh. Um, if you wanna download this blend file, you can, it's in the YouTube description. Or if you've been following on from the last tutorials, then you should have something like this as well. Now, first thing before you start baking anything is you wanna make sure that both the high poly and the low poly mesh are sharing the same position. Like they're basically they're overlapping each other. Um, and you can see that ours sort of is, uh, but it's not quite there. So what I'm gonna do is just select both meshes and then I'm gonna hit Alt G. Um, and Alt G just moves the selected object to the exact center of the grid floor there. And because the origin point is the same, it's made them perfectly line up. And now you can see that they are exactly overlapped. Okay, um, cool. The other thing I want you to note is that we are in cycles render mode. Um, there's a slightly different workflow if you're using the old internal renderer. So that's why I'm telling you right now, make sure you're, you are in cycles render mode. Um, okay, now the next thing you need to do is you need to create an image file because we are creating a normal map. And because there's not, like it, we're creating it out of thin, thin air, we have to first of all create that image. So I'm gonna split this view here and I'm gonna go to the UV image editor. Okay, so this is where it normally displays your render, which is why it says render result there. But if we click image and then hit new, um, this little pop-up here appears. Um, so first we'll give it a name, normal. And then for the width and the height, that's quite important um, because if it's too small of an image file, like dimension wise, um, you're gonna see like blurriness in your actual um, final looking uh, normal map. So you wanna make sure that it is big enough. One is a little bit too small, 2K is better. Um, K by the way is like thousand. So yeah, if this was 2000, that would be okay. But it's actually better if it is 4K in this particular case. So um, instead of actually just clicking this and typing in 4000, you wanna actually keep the numbers to the power of two, I believe that is. So the easiest way to do this is if it's 1024, if you just type in uh, times or star four, it's now done that multiplication for you in the field, which is a cool little trick. A lot of people, a lot of people don't realize you can do like, you can do like divided by three or uh, whatever. Oh, and the other thing you can do is if you just hit control C over one value and then control V, then it pastes it. There you go, little trick. Okay, so you hit okay and look at that. We have a completely black looking uh, square, which is fine. Um, now, the uh, bake settings is exactly where my head is. So I'm gonna move my face out of the way because it's less important than this. So the baking um, information, that's here in the render view, uh, render panel, right at the bottom, you'll see one that says bake right here. Um, so the bake type by default is set to combined. We want to change it to normal. Now you can leave all of these settings as its default. But because we are baking from one object onto another, what we want to do is select selected to active. And then once you've done that, you want to make sure that you first of all, select your high poly mesh first. So first is the high poly mesh. And I know that it's that because I can see all the sculpting detail there and then select your low poly mesh afterwards. 
Um, so selected to active is it's basically it's everything which is selected. It's going to bake it to the active object. The active is the last one which is selected because it is that lighter orange color, whereas the previous selected objects are orange. Um, so there you go. <laughs> a little bit, I don't know, got to work your head around it. But there you go. So now that we've done that, if we were to hit bake, you would see that it says no active image found. You might think, well, why? We've already created this one here. Well, it's actually looking for it in the material settings of that object. So if we were to split this view right here um, and then change this to be the node editor and then here, so we're, again, this is with the selected object, which is the low poly object. Um, there's no material, so I'm just gonna hit new. And then here, it's just created a diffuse shader, whatever, doesn't matter. What we want to do is add in the Im an image texture node. So texture, image texture. So that was shift A I used to bring this thing up. So shift A. And then just click, drop that in here. And then from this drop down, we're just going to select the name of our image that we created. So I'm just going to click normal. Now, because this image texture node is selected, now when we hit normal, it's going to start finally baking. Um, so it's a little roundabout way of, of getting there and it's a little bit fiddly and you wouldn't be uh, alone if you thought like, wow, that's a little bit uh, of a weird workflow. Um, but I believe the reason it's doing, it looks for the selected node in the material um, is that it is, uh, it, this baking setting allows you to bake every single object in a scene at the same time. So if you wanted to do that at the same time for every object, you would need to make sure that the material, there's a node in it selected. So that's that workflow. Anyways, it'll take you about 30 seconds and 100%. There we go. Okay. So this <laughs> is the image that it has baked. Now, if you're not used to, you know, normal maps, you're probably thinking like, is that right? Looks pretty weird to me, but maybe it's right. Well, no, it's half right. Okay, so this purple, pink, bluey sort of color, that's really good. So it's got some of it right, but it's got this mustard green values for everything else. So if you see like this mustard green, that's uh, basically incorrect. It means that something hasn't baked properly. I believe it means it's baking the opposite side of a face that it should be. Um, but anyway, the reason that it has done that is that down here underneath selected active, you've got a ray distance value. And that is the distance that the mesh is going to be shooting the rays out from the face to find the high poly mesh. So it found some of the information okay, like on the inside there. Um, but the stuff that is pointing outside the mesh, it hasn't found it at all. So we just need to increase the value to be anything that isn't um, zero. So let's try point one and let's bake that and let's see what we get. And 100%, there we go. Okay, so this is what we've got. Um, and this is almost there. It's like totally purple and blue and pink, which is great. And then right up here, we've got a little green area. Ah, oh, So something's not right as well. Um, and the reason for that is that that area right there, that portion of the mess, if we were to go into edit mode and have a look, we would see that it's this little circle right here. So this ray distance, what it's actually doing is it's shooting the rays out, outside the mess, which is great, but it's also happened to shoot it in this little area and it's actually hitting the walls on the other side. So basically this value is slightly too high. So let's try half of that value, which would be 0 0.05. And now when we bake it, we can see that it looks fine. So that green area has gone away and you can see the rest of it looks fantastic. So congratulations, you have baked your normal. So the next step is to save it. So go image, save as image. And then you need to find somewhere on your hard drive that you want to save it. Um, I've done this quite a few times. So I'm gonna name it normal six PNG and hit save as. Um, so if you were to, I don't know, you're exporting this into Unity or Unreal, you can go and do that right now. But what I'm gonna show you is how to, with this low poly one selected, is to give it a render and see how it looks with that normal map applied to it. So, uh, okay, let's move that out of the way and let's have a look at this. 
So what we want to do is we want to take this image texture and we want to connect it into the normal input of our diffuse shader right there. If you were to render it, it would look totally weird. And that is because you need to drop in a normal map node. So shift a vector normal map and drop it between the image texture and your um, thing. So it's now gone converting it to the right colors as it should. The strength, that's the strength of the bump, but we can just leave it as one. And the other thing you need to make sure that you change is go from color to non-color data, which is what you need to do whenever you're using a normal map. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's have a look at it with some lights. I've just got some lights here and a plane on uh, layer 11 there. So I'm just having a look at the low poly mesh and those lights, and let's give it a quick render with Shift Z. And you can actually see some detail on the mesh. Now it's really hard to see because this diffuse shader is really not the best shader for looking at this sort of thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it to something which we'll actually use for the final material and that is a principled shader, which is the new spanking new shader for uh, 2.79, which is really cool. Um, now I'll take that normal map, drop it into the normal input there. And now I'll set the value to be really metallic, 100% metallic and the roughness, I'll turn it down slightly and let's make this a darker metal. And now we can see what it looks like. And there you go. It's, it's hard to actually believe like, okay, like are we looking at the high poly mesh? No, this is the low poly mesh. We're only looking at the low poly on layer two there. And if I was to have a look in, um, in edit mode, you can see that it is that, okay? Which is really, really cool. Um, so that's why this normal map thing is so, so awesome. Um, because yeah, this just would not be possible like to render this in three seconds or whatever. Let's actually try it with the high poly mesh and let's see how long that takes. Um, it'll have a diffuse shader, I guess on it, but let's have a look. So you can see we went from the three second render to a whatever, this is seven seconds. So it's over double the render time to actually use the high poly, although there's no difference between them. Um, so that's why this is so important. That's why it's so cool. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, help other people to find it. And if you wanna go and uh, go to the next video after this, we are gonna be texture painting this bad boy. So if you wanna see that, go ahead and click on that video up there. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.